What's happening guys, Mike here from Hammer Fitness, bringing you another one of my workouts today. It's chest and triceps we're gonna have a crack at. Uh, so the idea behind these videos and episodes of all the form tip series is literally just to give you advice and tips on as much form and technique as I can. So you can literally pick and choose any exercise that you wish uh, to implement into your own workouts or you can even simply do the whole workout exact, exactly as I've done it in this workout. Now obviously through the series it's going to be a four day split, so chest and triceps, back and biceps legs and shoulders okay so that's the four you can even implement this over a series of weeks so if you were doing each series or each episode uh, for that four day split for let's say a month at a time that's going to be five months worth of workouts for you all right so this is going to be sick as i said you can also pick and choose any single workout or any single exercise that you want to implement into your own routine uh, of your wish now Stay tuned towards the very end. I'm gonna chuck in some groovy exercises that are very uncommon but smash the muscles that we're targeting like a treat. All right, so stay tuned. Let's hit the gym. Alrighty, first exercise we're gonna start off with is barbell bent over high row. Now, as you can notice, uh, the starting position I was in was quite straight. What I'm gonna do is keep my chest up and my glutes facing out. Now, I want my spine to be as neutral as possible. So, what I usually do is actually start. Uh, by actually rotating it so it feels like i'm actually sticking my ass out a bit more and keeping my chest up almost like a lordosis position so chest high and mighty but when you bend over the most uh natural position to be in or the best posi uh, position to be in is with a neutral spine so your spine is as straight as you can so we're gonna have to keep our abs nice and secure as for where we're pulling the bar think about the opposite of a bench press we're pulling that bar right to pretty much our nipple line or the middle of our chest uh, elbows are flared up so this is what makes it a high row not necessarily a low row what we're doing here is we're hitting more of our upper back rear delts uh, and a little bit of lats this is in comparison to a low row which is what we're going to be doing next again guys tempo two seconds up two seconds down as you can see i start off relatively slow because i want that control i want to control all my muscles i don't want them to control me and then I'll probably speed it up at the end just to have that assistance uh, of motivation if you don't necessarily have a spotter. And this is a pretty awkward one to have a spotter with anyway. So you can always do it yourself. The next one's low row. So my hands are gonna be underneath and about shoulder width apart. Now this is where the elbows come in nice and low. Position wise, it's pretty much the same. So keeping your chest up, bum facing out, and we wanna get at least 45 degrees over. As you can see, I'm almost like a tabletop. All right, so 45 degrees or lower. Now, what I usually do also is actually unlock the knees, so that just frees up a bit of flexibility, uh, so you can actually keep that uh, back right in instead of rounding it out. The last position we want to be in is a, a rounded back. And as you can see, I'm getting a bit more momentum in to get those last few reps in. Uh, over to a single arm lat pull down. Obviously, I'm having a few issues there. Now, if you can't do this at your gym, totally fine. You can just go to a normal lat pull down, but all we're trying to do is just hit the back from up nice and high, and obviously we're targeting the lats. Uh, I've got the privilege of doing it on this machine, uh, single arm, which is just trying to isolate that individual muscle just a little more. <clears throat> I do use straps as well, uh, mainly for the fact that I just want to focus on the actual muscle, not necessarily my forearm and the grip it takes to actually pull the weight down. But in doing this, I could actually, in fact, weaken uh, my forearms if you do it too much. So I definitely make a conscious effort to uh, not use straps all the time. So I still get that strength build up in my forearms. Now, as for the lat pull down position, you should be able to keep your chest up. Again, ass out. Uh, normally, all back exercises are quite similar in themselves. In terms of position wise, you always want a neutral spine no matter what exercise you're doing. But in terms of back, just really keep your chest up. We want to flare it open. Right, so the more you can actually pull your chest or stretch your chest out, the more we're going to be able to squeeze uh, on the agonist, which is our back. Uh, swinging a bit much there, but that's all good. As long as everything's nice and straight and your core's on, you are safe. So we're going to go for a machine low row here. Single-sided as well. Again, we're just trying to isolate that one side. Now this one, I'm actually pulling quite low. And what I like to do is usually... Uh, go from either a high or a low I always switch up the angles with any exercise I'm doing so if I was doing chest I'd go incline then flat 
not necessarily do the same thing all the time. It's always switching the angles. But with this one, so all I'm trying to do here, keeping that elbow in nice and narrow, almost the same as a seated row, but we're just trying to squeeze that back or the one side of the back against the other. So the scapula or the shoulder blade against the other side. So nice big stretch and then nice big squeeze again. Start off with that nice slow tempo, two seconds up, two seconds down, really control the muscle. And then as soon as you start fatiguing like I am here, then I'll just speed it up just a little bit. But always keeping that tension consistent, all right? That is key. Over to straight arm lap pull down. Or it can be a straight arm pull down, if you will. But the targeted muscles are the lats, so it totally makes sense. All right, so this time I'm actually using a wider bar, like a lat pull down bar. Uh, I find that it just hits it in a different angle. You could be doing the exact same thing, coming down on the exact same angle. Uh, it just feels a little different having your hands wider than a bit more narrow. It's always good to change things up because the more you challenge your muscles, the more you're going to grow, not only in strength, stamina, everything. And the last video we did was with a more narrow bar, so feel free to change things up. Do what uh, you feel like is working the most, uh, but it's always good to have something else in your inventory of exercises. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a nice big stretch on the way up, letting it go almost past my head, and then coming back down. I'm shortening up the reps here because I'm really fatigued, but sometimes I'll do that because I can actually feel it squeezing exactly where I'm doing it, so I'll just keep on doing it. So if you're feeling it, you're feeling it. You're the only one that's actually gonna know that. <clears throat> over to rear flies uh, with some dumbbells bent over again, same position as the low or high row. Uh, so we've got the chest up, bum out, back's nice and neutral. And our main objective is getting those shoulder blades squeezing together, throwing those dumbbells up, almost on about a 45 degree angle. What I like to think is just keep the knuckles relatively faced back um, we don't want to keep going or we don't want to swing up too high so we're actually doing just the delts or just the traps. Uh, we want to be targeting the upper back. <clears throat> Alrighty, moving on to single arm alternating dumbbell hammer curls. Uh, so the difference between normal curls and hammer curls is obviously you've just got your hand in the same sh uh, angle as you would smacking a hammer. Makes sense. And go figure, hammer fitness. So, all I'm doing here is keeping the elbow pinned in the same spot. So imagine screwing your elbow to your side. You really don't want to move it. Now, an angle is a big, uh, makes the big difference here. So the more uh, drawn in your elbow is, the easier it's going to be. The more that you've actually got your elbow forward of the uh, middle of your axis of your body, the harder it's going to be. Totally up to you to decide what you want to do. And you can even use it to your advantage. So you can actually have your elbow forward uh, to make it harder. And then once it starts getting harder, it's almost like a drop set without actually doing anything or changing the weights. You can draw your elbow back to make it easier. Totally up to you. Just keep that tempo nice and consistent. Here's a groovy exercise I was talking about earlier, guys. It is actually bicep extensions. What the bicep does not extend necessarily. Um, it's not the usually what... Uh, is making that extension usually the tricep is but if we put the weight where our bicep usually curls we can do the opposite okay so we're contracting both biceps and doing the reverse all right so you're actually letting the bicep go and then bringing it back up again and then alternating all right so once I start fatiguing in that because it fatigues really quick you don't need much weight at all I've only got tens here and then you can go into some normal curls, almost like a drop set because that weight is lighter and it is do, uh, easier doing it in this format, not necessarily the other way. So this is a real groovy one. Get some burning like crazy. As you can see, they're only 10s and I'm starting to fatigue big time. They are just cooking my biceps like you wouldn't believe. We're gonna move on to standing barbell curls. So right here I've got a chest plate on, uh, it's actually, it's like a standing preacher curl, really handy one, uh, I think it actually works better for my back um, and just absolutely cooks the biceps as well. Uh, again, it makes it harder in the sense that it's actually keeping your elbows not only in the same position, but more forward of the middle of your axis of your body. Like I said before, that's where it is actually harder and you can't pull them back because the plate's there. Really good if you want to uh, isolate uh, for something standing. Really good if you've got a home gym as well because 
if you can't be bothered buying a preacher curl which takes up a bit of floor space or just space in general uh, this is really handy to have you can just hang it up on the wall uh, but again tempo is key as well really get those biceps cranking really keep your back nice and straight or as straight as you can if you're worried about any tension on your lower back i'd recommend actually just standing up against the wall uh, and that's almost even more brutal because you can't even move it's just more isolating all right one last groovy exercise not a lot of people do it all i swear i was the creator of this but i'm sure i wasn't nothing is really original but i haven't seen anyone do this <clears throat> so what i'm doing is actually putting a resistance band up against uh, a chin-up bar and I'm contracting with my biceps so pulling my biceps in as close as I can and they're not even that close at the moment but I'm pretty sure they're quite cooked so I can't even get them any closer uh, I'm squeezing the crap out of them and then all I'm doing is actually moving my weight back so it's almost like a body weight bicep curl yet it's in a uh, isometric contraction all right so I'm actually holding the curl holding the tension and then I'm actually moving uh, being the weight all right, so quite different to your normal getting a weight and moving it with your biceps. All right, so you're contracting with your biceps and you are acting as the weight, moving back. And being a resistance band, the tension increases the further you are away from it. So, man, the burn is crazy as well. And as Annie says, if it burns, it grows or just gets better for that matter. So really cool exercise just to change things up, chuck in your inventory, it's one of those ones that you can't go without. As soon as you learn it, you can't unlearn it, and I'm sure you're going to love it when you try it. Please let me know how you go with this one. And that is it for today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the workout. Please, like I said before, pick and choose any of the exercises that you want to use. Otherwise, you can use the entire workout yourself, which is right here. I'd really recommend to screenshot it if you want to use it. Uh, and worst case, if you don't know what an exercise is, you can always go back uh, to where it is in the video uh, and have me voicing over just as general advice on how to do it properly and get the most out of every single, not only exercise, but workout. Uh, that is my goal for you guys, just maximizing every single one of your workouts and all the effort you put into the gym, all right? Because you deserve exactly what you want. Take care, guys. Uh,